us. My brothers and sisters, comrades, good evening. We're so happy to see all of you here. Uh, we're hoping you're keeping healthy, uh, physically distant, but communally and socially close. It is so important. We need all of us. We know that we're going through some uh, difficult times. That's why we're here. But we also know that we're going to get through it. You know, I just look at the example uh, set by the frontline workers, and and it gives me it gives me so so much hope. But I gotta say that the thing that keeps me up at night is the thought that this didn't have to happen. You know, it didn't have to be this way. If if only they had listened. Look at the example uh, set by China. Okay, they made some mistakes at first, but they corrected them. And now they're able to help other countries. By the way, I read this morning uh, that China is gifting New York with 1000 respirators. I'm in New York, by the way. Thank you, China. That's what I call solidarity. And speaking of solidarity, look at the example set by Socialist Cuba, a small island in the Caribbean under embargo by this country. But on this issue, they are punching like heavyweights, sending doctors to Brazil, to Italy, to Spain, to other countries. Of course, you got to say you don't have to be a socialist or a communist to see the dangers posed by this virus. You do, however, have to be sane. Look at South Korea. I don't get it. If, if Trump had, had only listened to the scientists, but no, he had to go and call it a hoax. He had to go and call it a scam. He had to go and call it the China virus. And there he is, standing in the White House, lying, sending mixed signals. One day, wear a scarf. Next day, don't wear a scarf. Third day, he says, I ain't wearing no scarf. Wear a mask, don't wear a mask. Go to work, don't go to work. It's a mass of confusion. Can you imagine? They wanted to send us back to work on Easter. Easter, at the height of the crisis hundreds of thousands, maybe more, would have gotten sick and died. They just didn't care. And you know who was going to be affected the most. You know what we say, when the world catches cold, people of color catch pneumonia. And for what? So that they can maintain the corporate bottom line? By the way, we scored a big victory last Sunday when Trump was compelled to stay at, to extend the stay at home policy until April. It was a big victory and don't let nobody tell you nothing different. It just goes to show you that the marching slogan that we use that a people united can't be defeated is true. And the people were united on this issue. But we can't get too excited because they're using the excuse of the crisis to implement their agenda anyway. Corporations can now pollute as much as they want. They are turning asylum seekers back at the border. State governors are denying abortions. They're getting rid of paid sick leave. Yeah, the paid sick leave that Congress just passed, now they're gutting it. They're making it harder for public workers to organize. And organize we must. You know that the unemployment rate could go as high as 30%. That's higher than during the Depression. And during the Depression, the only way to address the crisis was for the government to provide public works jobs, government jobs. Today, in this situation, that means the Green New Deal plus more. 
we've got to rebuild the roads, we've got to rebuild the trains, we've got to rebuild the water plants, the electrical grid, the internet, bring it to the country, the bridges, you name it, on a whole new sustainable basis. Will it be enough? I don't know. But if not, then it's got to be whatever it takes to do it. That's what Bernie said in a town hall last week, and I agree with him. Whatever it takes to solve the crisis, we have to fight to make that so. And in the first place, that means addressing the crisis in the hospitals. They're overrun. Can the problem be solved as they are presently constituted in this private system? I don't know. Spain faced the same problem. They had to socialize their hospitals. Do we need to do that here? Well, whatever it takes. That includes, uh, brothers and sisters, the crisis at the border and the thousands held in overcrowded detention. The Congressional Hispanic Caucus says release them. We agree. And while we're releasing people, let's take a look at those who are incarcerated for nonviolent drug offenses. And how about, how about an amnesty for the elderly? for whom this virus will be a death sentence. Comrades, if there's one thing to me that's clear, it is that this administration has to be defeated in November, whatever it takes. And we believe in the Communist Party that it's gonna take a movement and a platform that such a movement can unite around. In this socialist moment, we welcome Bernie's campaign. It had a movement behind it, and so it appeared did Elizabeth Warren's. So tonight, uh, comrades, we say to all of you, let us unite and defeat the right. Our ability to uh, help the people most affected by this crisis depends on it. Our ability to defend democracy as limited as it is in this crisis, depends on it. And make no mistake, those are the stakes. You know, we have no illusions about the forces involved. We know that our ability to organize on the ground will determine what will happen in a new administration. But the crisis we are faced with is ongoing. Capitalism is failing, and people are beginning to see that. And it is precisely when capitalism fails that people begin to see the need for socialist solutions. So let us uh, uh, gather together our forces. Let us uh, organize our work. Let us uh, prepare for the big battles ahead and let us uh, take care of each other as we do so. Lend a hand, uh, make a phone call, cook a meal, go to the drugstore, the doctor, wash some clothes, whatever people need. You know, our working class is ready to fight and we believe we can win. We saw that when the teachers struck, we saw it when the auto workers went out and we're seeing it as this crisis unfolds. And that gives us great confidence that we're going to come through this and we're going to come through it more united, better organized, and more able to put our class and people on a better footing. And by the way, before I end, let me say we've got to stop Trump from invading Venezuela, you know, because once that kind of thing happens, Lord knows what's going to happen next. So stay healthy, please stay strong. Stay physically distant for now. Uh, stay, let's say, socialistically close. Um, and let's stay in the fight. Thank you very much.